Hey guys. I just got off an awesome webinar and I felt like there was a lot of takeaways that I could share here that hopefully no matter what you do in life you can use them to your benefit and they can um, bless your life in some way or another. So I'm going to share them. Um, the webinar was all about being busy but um, not letting busy kind of become an excuse and a reason that you don't live the life that you feel called to live. Um, do you guys ever feel like nowadays it's some sort of competition to be the busiest? And it's some sort of like rat race to see like, oh, well, I'm busier or blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, good for freaking you. You ain't going to get some sort of trophy unless you want to make one yourself because there's no award for who's the busiest and if you are I'm actually sorry because it's not something to be proud of. Um, being busy is a false sense of accomplishment in my opinion. Um, I feel that it's it's not a competition and so many people today are, are making it into some sort of competition and we ultimately are forgetting that we are in charge of controlling our time. We have that power and that ability to choose what we're fulfilling our moments of our life with. So if you're spending them doing things you don't want to do, that's ultimately a reflection of the choices you're making. And that just takes a deep down um, self dive to really see that. Um, but I, I'm so sick of seeing women that are stopping themselves from doing things and pursuing things in their life that um, can give them a sense of either being present or a sense of freedom because they feel they're too busy. So whether your goal is to just be a more present parent or um, friend or build an empire or find time to take care of your health or just not feel like a loose cannon, <laughs> a hot mess that's about to blow, um, I came up with a few steps, there's eight of them, that I hope will give you some purpose in finding a way to navigate a, being a better kind of busy is what I, I've been calling it and what I was calling it throughout the webinar. So um, here is what I got for you. Step one is to know what you're dealing with. I think that I, I don't want to preach that you have to be some crazy type A OCD organization freak, um, but I think that people who don't have some sense of organization to their life ultimately feel more busy because they don't know what's coming next. It's like they're they're on this downward spiral every day. They wake up and they're just like, blah, 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 blah. like there goes my day. Instead of like having a purpose to knowing what's next. Um, and I understand that, especially with kids, you can't always be um, thinking ten steps ahead. Um, but they they say that the most successful people in life are always thinking ten steps ahead. And, you know, for me, it is a Sunday routine. Every Sunday I sit down and I look at what's ahead the next week. And I wish that I could go further than that, but the way my life is right now, that's all I can do. And I also have to take grace with that, knowing that what I have planned for those seven days most likely won't go according to plan, but at least I have some sort of sense of what's going to happen over the next seven days. In my business, I'm always trying to think three months ahead. Because I'm trying to foresee what's coming, what what challenges I'm going to be facing. I don't like to plan out the details three months in advance, but I do like to plan that far ahead so I can provide the best experience for my customers. And I think that that goes hand in hand with knowing what I'm going to be providing. Um, and then step two with it is just or, organizing your priorities. And I, I think that that's easier to do once you do step one and you know what you're dealing with. And priorities can be, you know, from a big scale to a small scale. It can be things from family and religion to freaking showering or cleaning your house, you know. I always bring it back to something I call in, in my job as a why. Why are you doing these things, you know? Like, 
is it ultimately because it's bringing you joy and satisfaction or are you doing it to please other people? Are you getting up and getting ready in the morning because you're that type of person that's like, yep, I'm going to own the day now. Good. Go, girl. Shower it up. Get fancied up. Go look like your hot self and flaunt it. Go for it. If you're getting ready and spending an hour every morning to do that, because you feel like you have to live up to some social standard or you have to dress a certain way or you're changing your outfit 50 times because you feel like you have to look a certain way, go buy yourself some dry shampoo and some bronzer, sleep with your makeup on for four days like me and, and call it a day because you are not serving yourself when you're doing things for other people. So, so if you look at your priorities, you're able to see then why you're doing these things. Are you doing them for you? and for the purpose behind what you're adding to your plate, or are you doing it for other people? Because if you're doing it for other people, that's that's step strike one against you for adding to your busyness. Um, so I think that, that, that step two really takes a big, deep um, look in the mirror at, as why you're doing these things that you're ultimately adding to your own plate. Um, and then that kind of leads into step three, which is a true inventory of your day. I did Dave Ramsey's um, money management a long time ago when I pay started paying off all of my debt last year. And one thing that he teaches in there is to delegate a purpose to every dollar because you can't know where your money's going if you don't have um, it pre-assigned to a destination, right? All of a sudden you'll have a hundred bucks and it's gone and you're like, well, what the heck did I spend it on? Um, and it was an extra $20 at Target here or an extra couple Starbucks trips there and all of a sudden it's gone. And once I started clicking with that and seeing my debt get paid off once I was paying um, close attention to that, I started applying that to my time in my business because Building my business, um, I, I have very minimal time, like literally 15 minutes a day. I was working three full-time nursing jobs, so I had to make sure those 15 minutes a day were freaking boss on. Like, I knew exactly what I was doing. I was squeezing every little bit out of those 15 minutes that I possibly could, right? So I applied that concept to the minutes of my day. And I said, okay, these I want to make sure my minutes are not getting wasted. These are what I'm going to do in this chunk of time. And that really helped me um, get more productive and efficient. But first I had to see what was actually happening. So I, I challenged everybody who was on my webinar just now to forget what I taught them tonight and tomorrow morning wake up and I'd love to hear if you do this because I, I it was a huge aha moment for me and track every single thing that you do during the day tomorrow. So like if you wake up and all of a sudden you find yourself, you're not even out of bed yet and you've spent 15 minutes scrolling social media, write that down. If you find that you spent, you know, five, 10 extra minutes sitting in the parking lot dreading going into work, write that down. If you sat down at work to check your email and all of a sudden you got distracted by the Target ad in your inbox and you spent 15 minutes scrolling through that, write that down. Um, what every single thing that happens in your day, write that down because that's then when you can take that Dave Ramsey concept and apply it and really see where your time is being spent because that was a huge aha moment for me to be like, wow, I was actually wasting a lot more time than I thought I had. And then when you calculate that all up at the end of the day, it's like, whoa, that was a lot of time wasted. Um, maybe it wasn't wasted. Maybe yours isn't like mine, but maybe it will be a true gut check for you and a good starting point for you to kind of be able to navigate and, and clean up your busy. Um, so then step number four is then multitask where you can. So in this step, you're taking that inventory and then you're taking your priorities and you're working from the most top priority and multitasking down from that, right? Where, what can you combine? Um, let's say you're... you're your mindset is a priority right now and you really want to read this book that's going to help you with X, Y, and Z. Listen to it as audio on your way to work or on your way to the gym or on your way to whatever. Um, you know, try to multitask those those things that you can that, that you can do in one shot um, if you don't have time to sit down and read a hardcover book. If you find yourself in that inventory saying that you're spending all this time in the kitchen cooking, learn to meal prep and cook once a week 
right? Or maybe once every three days if that's more realistic for you and your family. Um, if you find yourself going to the grocery store four times a week, start making a shopping list and going online grocery shopping, Amazon Pantry. Love it. You know, and that leads me into step five. You have to start evaluating that true inventory and creating systems and solutions for what's sucking you dry, okay? Um, if you're finding the same things every week you're complaining about, then you're not solving that problem. You're living in a world of insanity that you're creating for yourself. If you're, if you keep solving the same problem over and over and over again, you're never actually solving it. Instead, learn to create a system and a solution for it so then you can move on to the next thing. And you can start ticking these things off your list and becoming, you know, more proficient in, in what you're doing and how you're handling curveballs that life's going to throw at you, right? Um, and these can be things like maybe coming up with a schedule with a carpool. If you find that the carpool schedule or the transportation thing for your kids when sports comes around and school and everyone's got to be in different places, you know, figuring out a routine for that that makes sense. Um, and if that is a crazy, insane time of your day, block it off. And that's all you have to do. That's your only priority for then because before that time arrives, you've already gotten everything else done in your day. Um, so it doesn't have to stress you out. Uh, and then number six is uh, delegate and call in the troops. You know, you don't have to do this thing called life alone. Um, you know, figure out what, what stresses you out the most. And I, I was saying, you know, it, it, do you need to treat yourself to a house cleaner once a month? Do you need to treat yourself to... Um, maybe I have a friend who hired someone to meal prep for her because she hates doing that, but yet it was the biggest thorn in her side. So it was something that she was willing to seek out and delegate and it made like, it lifted so much weight off of her shoulders and provided her so much more downtime and presence time at night with her family when everyone was in the home around the dinner table together. Um, so she was solution oriented and it made a huge difference in her life. Um, and then number seven is learn to say no not acting like an expert here. This is still a very hard thing for me. However, this last month, um, actually probably two or three months now, I was really challenged to do this. Um, not even challenged, just kind of forced to with some personal things that have been happening. I had to literally take everything off of my calendar. Everything. I, I did not attend. The only thing I did socially was go visit one of my best friend's new newborns. Um, and that was a struggle for me to get out of the house and to do that. I, and I had to say no to so many things, even things that normally would fill me up, um, which was very, very hard. But I had to say no to be able to fulfill things that were going on, to be able to give time to the solution to fix what was happening, right? Because you can't keep just piling on um, things that you're not solving. And, and I had to stop and say no, and that was very hard for me. And I actually, I'm so, I carry such guilt with things like that. I, I wrote to all of my close friends and I explained what was going on and why, and uh, I let them in on, on the reason behind that. Um, but you don't owe anybody a reason. I just did that because they're my best friends. but. You don't own any owe anybody a reason. Um, what I challenge you to do is say no to things that don't fulfill that that um, number two priority. What you listed in number two as your priorities or your why. Um, if they if you're not leaving a meeting like with a friend for lunch or dinner or coffee and you're feeling oh that just lifted me up. Don't have coffee with them, okay? Like stop. Your life is not for other people to take advantage of and to, you know, suck dry of coffee dates and dinner dates and lunch dates. If that's what you love and that's what fills your cup, go for it. Fill your calendar up, girl. But I'm just trying to encourage you to say yes to the things that serve you and move you forward and say no to the things that you are doing because you feel obligated to do. Because if your busy is full of things that you feel obligated to do, that's your bad. If you're busy is full of things that are making you tick and making you a better person every single day, then amen, praise your busy because you are doing it right. Um, and then number the last little number eight, I just wanted to remind you that you're always going to find time 
for the things that make your life better. Always. And that should be kind of a hint to number seven. Um, but I love the quote <laughs> from Oprah. She says, do what you have to do until you can do what you want to do. Because sometimes you might be going through a phase of busy. Like I have a lot of girlfriends who are working their way up in a corporate ladder right now. And they're, they're really busy with work. And they're working insane hours and things like that. And they, they're genuinely just very busy right now because it's going to get them to an end point that they've always dreamed of. If that's your busy, don't give up because like she says, do what you have to do until you can do what you wanna do. Sometimes a phase of busy that you might be going through is strictly because it's getting you to that end goal. It's You're gonna have to go through a phase of sacrifice and, and increase stress and things like that to get you to that end goal, but just be, be cognizant of the fact that it shouldn't take forever. Okay, because you don't want to sit here living life on this hamster wheel of busyness, of obligations and things you feel like you have to do while you feel like you're chasing this carrot of what you're either promised or you're dreaming of and things like that, right? You, you want to get off that hamster wheel and with that carrot in your hand faster than, than, than you might be being told by other people if you're in a corporate world or whatever. Um, so just be aware of that. But I just want you guys to live the best, most fulfilled, most present, most happy life that you can. And I think that so many times people let being busy just kill their joy and kill their energy and 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 really stop them from doing things that can move them forward in so many ways in life. So I hope that those tips are helpful. If not, I don't know why you're still on, but thanks for hanging with me. <laughs> I love you guys. Um, give me some feedback. Uh, let me know if you try any of those steps and if they help you. If you, um, a couple books that I will recommend: Five Second Rule, Miracle Morning, um, and the Four Hour Work Week are all related to this topic. That are amazing books. You can add them to your car ride audio. But, anyways, thanks for listening to me. I hope you guys have a wonderful Thursday. Bye, friends.